hey welcome to another week i hope you've all been well i thank you so much for the support for my last video for all of you who have watched it and liked it and shared it and i appreciate all your support and as promised i am going to talk about sewing machines this week so as i was planning the content i realized that i can't really get into machine maintenance without really explaining parts of a sewing machine the different types of sewing machine and all that so that is what i'm going to do but i am going to do a two-part series for this sewing machine um video because i want it to be a resource and i know that the machine maintenance is usually a very big issue for a lot of people so i'm going to make that a separate video just so that you can have that as a resource to keep checking so that when you are checking on it you don't have to watch the whole video about sewing machines so i am going to split this video into two and i'm releasing both of them this week yes i'm releasing them both this week so that you can watch both um and then next week i will get into the fabric video as i promised so let's begin <laughs> last week i did touch a bit on sewing machines as part of the equipment and tools you need for your sewing projects that are a must have so i did mention that there are machines that i would definitely advise you not to buy the handheld sewing machine and the mini the mini portable machine i will not really dwell into them so much but they are on the list of some machines that people buy as i said those are machines you buy um they're, for me they are like a toy so you could just buy it for maybe a kid who's very interested in sewing and they just want to play around with a machine but of course they have needles so they're not the safest things but i'm going to talk about different types of machine i won't dwell so much in into the machines that um you wouldn't use to sew clothes i will mention them in passing like the ones that you use to make leather because it's very different um, the ones you use just for different things are things like buttonhole machines and different types of industrial machines um, It really does depend on what you want to get into so just from what I've said Yes, you cannot use your sewing machine for making clothes to go and make leather bags and Leather goods and stuff like that. There's a whole different machine for that because it's a whole process towards that one of these days I am definitely going to do a feature on leather so that you can learn more about leather but for today, we're just going to generally talk about parts of a sewing machine, types of a sewing machine, and then part two will be the maintenance of a sewing machine. It's very difficult for you to be able to know how to maintain your machine if you do not know the name of the parts. So I am going to get into that and it's going to be in slide form. The usual ways that you can be able to save, do screenshots and easier for you to reference later on. So let's start. So there are different types of sewing machines, but before I get into that, I wanted to do my disclaimer about these machines. I know I mentioned it in last week's video. Do not buy these machines if you want to take sewing seriously. These are not machines that last very long. They are very difficult to thread. They're very difficult to use. They do not sew layers and they're hard to maintain. The last machine is something close to a portable domestic machine an electric one but still it's better you just spend more money on a good machine than any of these three so now let's get into it so there are two types of sewing machines this domestic sewing machine and industrial sewing machine and there are different types of domestic sewing machines and so that's what we're going to start with there's a mechanical sewing machine electronic sewing machine computerized sewing machine embroidery sewing machine quilting and overlock serger sewing machines so i am going to get into these individually so that you can understand more and then we're going to get into the industrial sewing machines so we begin with the mechanical treadle machine this is actually the first machine i started learning how to sew with it's actually very good to help you learn how to control your speed of your machine it's the most affordable machine you can get in kenya and in kenya at least the ones that are available you can actually 
uh, buy a motor and upgrade it into electrical but it's manual you step on the treadle and it moves and then of course there are some older versions that where you spin the uh, basically the machine with your hand but this is the very first type of machine of course i'm sure there are older versions than this but these were where machines started from and they're still available now you can buy vintage ones and you can also buy some modern ones and in the rural areas these are the most popular machines that are used the main issue they tend to have is that they take up a lot of space because they come they come with a table most of the time you can get it without a table especially if you put a mortar it's portable and all that but in its basic form it comes with a table because you need it to you need the treadle part so it can take up space and that is why sometimes it's not the most ideal machine to get but it is the most affordable machine to get for sure it is also very sturdy and it can last many many years i've never had a very big issue with my machine i think there's only once i had to replace the inside section and that was after i think 10 years and it was also not very expensive to do that so this is one of the sturdiest machines i can recommend because it's also full metal and easy to use and also easy to fix next we have the more modern version of the machine which is the electric sewing machine it's an upgraded version of the mechanical one it's portable most of them are portable also pretty simple to use um, a lot of them are made of plastic now they come in various brands various price points depending on the additional um knobs they have or stitches they have so they tend to have multiple stitches the first machine doesn't have this one has additional stitches um it can have zigzag it can have buttonholes it can have different presser foots i'll explain all that the different parts of the machine when when i'm explaining the different parts of the machine i'll explain more about the the differences but um yeah this one is a more advanced one but it needs electricity it cannot work without electricity the computerized machine is also now another upgrade of the electric machine um, it tends to have built-in software and stitch programs that you can put um, it has a display screen and sometimes they even stitch on their own i guess it depends on how expensive the machine is that you buy and they are of course because of the computerized parts the companies that sell them have to provide um, services to maintain and it's always good to get a rebut rep from a reputable company and from a known brand do not get a brand that is not known because of spare parts and also just because of the warranty either way they're very sturdy but it's not the kind of machine that you just allow anyone to use um, because they can get spoiled very easily so it's important to let someone who understands the machine to use it there is the embroidery machine this is specifically for embroidery stitches a lot of them can still do regular stitching but they also have built in um programs to to just do embroidery and they work on their own you actually just put it you can see the loom um, on the needle section there of the machine and it will just stitch it for you a lot of people who do branding and especially embroidery on um corporate um products and things like that they tend to use this type of a machine although this is a domestic version there is an industrial version so it's a very specialized machine as well it's not one that you just allow anyone to use and it's also very expensive but it's also a study machine there is the quilting machine um the difference between this machine and other machines is that it can sew through thicker quantities of fabric and then it's also longer it has a longer arm so that you can have more space to put your machine although generally you can um you can modify your machines to have longer arms if you if you need to you don't have to buy a specific quilting machine but if you do a lot of quilting definitely it makes more sense to get a quilting machine so if you know you like to make duvets and big blankets and stuff like that this is perfect um, the brand Genomi is very popular with uh, people who do quilting, um, but it also does general sewing.
and lastly it's the overlock stroke charger it depends on the country you come from um, in terms of the name that you use so these are basically for neatening your edges and it also is very good for sewing stretch fabric which is also called knit fabrics um they help better especially just for your domestic use Indus there's industrial machines that do that kind of um, the stretch fabrics way better so this machine tends to have th three or four threads there is a mechanical version of this there is also an industrial version of this but this is the best type for domestic um it's easier to thread than um, the mechanical machine um, all of them have different ways of threading and most of them have guides on how you thread them especially on the manual um, but yeah the more expensive your saja the sometimes the easier it is to use but also the harder it is to maintain because the service might be more expensive but they do take up a lot of space they do remove um, when you're surging when you're doing your overlocks usually there is dirt that comes up because of cutting threads and cutting fabric so you always have to make sure you have a container that collects that and there are some machines that are even modified to have a, a a place where the dirt is collected so any of those are the domestic machines um i hope at least this information has helped you figure out which one you should get um because at least you should get the saja or the overlock machine and one of the other machines to sew so anyway this is just a way for you to gauge and to be informed on what kind of machine you should get. Now we get into the industrial machines. Let me tell you, as I was researching for this, I think I was on online for, let's just say a couple of hours because I kept discovering new machines and it just blew my mind. I think um, generally my perspective on sewing machines has been very few because I, I just do clothes i just didn't realize that there were so many machines for so many different things of course there's some that i knew button hole buttons um the industrial saga um the flat lock and stuff like that i have come across but i was just amazed and just uh, to give perspective on the industrial machine what you need to understand is that these are machines that are used mostly by factories so because of that you find that you get a machine that only does one specific job and that job usually is given to one specific person in the factory and that is all they do all day it is very rare that someone would work in a factory and be rotated around different departments to learn how to sew every single process of a garment so sometimes if your job is buttons you're just going to do buttons and buttons and buttons and you'll be the expert of buttons the point that if someone um gave you um, a shirt that was not stitched well and you're supposed to do buttons you would know that there's something off because maybe the buttons didn't fit in well so that's how factories work um so that is why you find that there are a lot of specialized machines for factories so of course um just read all this that i've written because it's a lot i know um but um i'm just going to get into the machines there are a couple of them and i want to get through them pretty fast we begin with the straight stitch industrial machine which is the machine i have because it can sew straight stitches and it's very sturdy and very strong um and this one is basically the basic one it only does a straight stitch and you can sew all sorts of heavy fabrics with it in multiples denim um even you can sew them in denim and you can even sew very light fabrics like chiffon you just have to change the needle and things like that but it's a very sturdy machine most of these machines are easily available both second hand and new in kenya because a lot of these factories that use these machines replace their machines very fast so you find that the second hand machines are usually still pretty new still good quality and will still last you long my machine is actually second hand and i've had it for three years and i've not had any incidents with them so this is something to consider um when you are thinking of buying a machine if you decide to buy an industrial one instead of one of the domestic ones and it's definitely more ideal to get this for business it moves faster just understand that all the um, industrial machines move way faster in speed than the domestic ones but you can still regulate your speed but that's just something worth noting 
So of course, the next machine is an industrial overlock machine. It also has three to four threads. It also has a very big table. Um, it's not, it can't be portable because it has a treadle at the, at the bottom. Um, so even the street stitch one also has a, it has a table and a treadle. It cannot, it's not portable at all. So that's something worth noting, even with this industrial overlock machine. And it can also do t-shirt and a bit of knitwear, um, but there's a machine specifically for it, uh, for doing knitwear, but yeah, this can also do basic. So the flat lock machine is what is used to, for knits. Um, there's a way it stitches that basically it locks the edge without cutting it. So this is a machine for knitwear and yeah, can also be used to do hems. So this is also another. So we proceed with the feed off arm machine. This machine is used for making flat and felt seams. So it uses two needles and form a chain stitch. So it's used for seams and underarms and sewing um, jeans in seams um, and things like that. Um, I'm sure those are some lingo you don't understand, but that's what the machine is for. The next one is a button hole button attaching machine and that's specifically only used to attach buttons and there are people who actually have businesses here in kenya where they just offer services where they do buttons and next the buttonhole machine this is also specifically only used to do buttonholes and it can also cut the buttonhole if you set it up like that and both the button and the buttonhole machine can be adjusted into various sizes of the buttons that are available. The next machine is the back tucking machine. This is specifically used to reinforce certain certain um, seams and certain places in your garment. So basically, if you owned a pair of jeans, I'm sure you've seen like the loops where you put your belt, usually have a very reinforced fab, uh, thread. That is what this machine is specifically used for. And the next one is a zigzag machine. This one is specifically used for making bras and underwear, it's basically used on stretch fabric. And you probably, if you've noted on your bra or on your underwear, there's usually there's a section where there's a zigzag stitch. So this is used to stitch it up. The flat lock is used to finish up the um, anything that's made out of stretch. Although it can also be used in fabrics that are not stretch like jackets and also a lot of bras have sections where they're not stretch. Then there is a leather machine. This machine is specific to leather because it even has a special foot called the walking foot. Um, and with the walking foot, the reason why you use it is because leather has a very, a certain texture that cannot be used on a regular machine. Do not use your regular machine to sew leather. You're going to spoil your machine. So this um, foot, if you actually check online on videos, you will see that it actually works on the leather as it pushes it and sews it. So don't use your straight um, stitch machine for this. Definitely just invest in a machine that sews leather. And I'm sure that there are other machines that sew leather apart from this one. There is a chain stitch machine. Um, this specific one that is in the photo is used manually. If you see the bottom of the picture, you can see a lever and that's usually used to spin it round to create a chain stitch. That is for the manual one. Um, there is also electric ones, computerized ones where um, the machine just sews the design you want, but this specifically one, this specific one is a manual one, but it is still industrial because it's mostly used for people who do um, embroidery chain stitches in bulk. Next, we have the blind stitch. This is actually supposed to help with hemming and the hemming is specific for, I mean, it's, it's done in a way that the other side doesn't show any stitches. So this, there's a specific machine to make sure that you have a blind stitch hem. Then there is, um, lastly, the lock stitch, um, machine and this one creates two stitches and it's used it can also do zigzag it, it can use two needles it can also use one needle and it does straight stitch and it creates a stitch that's like a box so it's very reinforced and you see it mostly in your your denim your jeans it's usually very um you always it always looks like it's a very very thick thread that has been used to stitch it so in a nutshell those are the 
mechanical machines. I also learned about industrial overlock machines that are self-threading that cost so much money, but there is a lot of advancement in machinery. A lot of them are also becoming more and more power efficient so that you don't have to use a lot of electricity. And I have discovered so many machines doing the research of this, as I said, and I am sure I've not covered all of them, but I think this gives you a pretty good idea of what to look out for. Yeah, so next. Now we are going to get into the parts of a sewing machine. This is very important for you to know because it's going to help with the maintenance of the sewing machine. So knowing the names of the parts helps you because even if you do decide to Google and find a solution for what's happening with your machine, knowing the right name is what's going to help you figure it out. So they are generally basic maintenance you should always do. You should always oil your machine and you should always remove lint and things like that. We'll get more into that when we are talking about your machine maintenance. But um, just to an overview, some of the machines have more features than others. So depending on how advanced your machine is, there are some features that your machine won't have. And then also there are variations of the different parts of the machine. So I've tried as much as possible in the examples I used to try and include different variations, but most of them, I think you'll get the gist if you have had a sewing machine for a while, you'll understand what the different parts are and the functions generally are the same, maybe just how it works in your machine, maybe a little bit different. So let's start. We start with the spool pin, which is usually at the top of your sewing machine. It can be plastic or metal, and its main function is to hold up the thread. That's mostly if you're sewing, when you're sewing and when you're winding. Then now number two is the bobbin winding spindle. That is where you place your bobbin when you're winding it. Winding it basically means putting thread in the bobbin. The bobbin winding stopper is what actually stops the bobbin from getting too full that it won't be able to get into your bobbin case. I will show you what a bobbin and a bobbin case is later, but that is what the bobbin winding stopper is. Then there is this stitch width dial. Basically it regulates how wide your stitches are going to be and it's mostly used to control the zigzag stitches specifically. And then there is the pattern the stitch pattern, the um, selector dial, this one specifically, you'll get it in the from the electric sewing machines um, because it helps you choose different types of stitches. The manual machine does not have this. Next, we have the hand wheel, which is used to raise and lower your needle, which is situated on the right side of your machine. I really don't know if they're left sided machines it would be very interesting to know but either way you need that when you especially when you are trying to thread your needle you need um the hand wheel is what uses you use to control that next um there is a stitch length dial basically this um regulates how long your stitches is some stitches are very short some stitches are very long and internationally if you are doing mass production there are some stitch lengths that they actually recommend that you should have per inch and yeah i guess those are things that you can research and find out then there is a reverse stitch lever basically when you're sewing um you can't just sew without reversing the a bit of the stitch because if you don't reverse then it unravels, so you need the reverse stitch lever. Of course, they look different depending on the machine you are using, but they all machines have the reverse stitch lever in terms of the machines that sew straight stitches. Of course, then there's this power switch. Um, basically, this is what is used to turn your machine on and off. There are some machines that don't necessarily have a switch, but you just undo the cable. But yeah, there's a power switch, and this is how they look. That is if your machine is electrical. Then there is the bobbin wind thread guide. Generally, um, most sewing machines have um, certain sections of the machine where you can be able to wind your bobbin. So there is a guide that it has to pass through that is different from the guide that guides your machine to your needle to sew. So there is a bobbin winder thread guide and they, are, they actually look different depending on the machine. And then there is the thread tension dial. 
this one basically regulates how tight or loose your your thread is and this is something that you you, you have to be very very um professional in how you sew because you can easily mess up your sewing project if you if you do not adjust your tension well because you can end up having very loose stitches or very tight stitches and then end up ruining even the fabric that you're stitching so this dial basically helps you regulate that and then there is the thread take up lever this is part of the threading of the machine um, if you don't own a sewing machine you might not know that you don't just put a needle, thread through a needle and then you start sewing there are actually levers that actually regulate how the thread gets into the needle and does timing a timing process so they look different depending on the machine you have but there is a thread take up lever basically it takes a thread up and down and then there is the needle clamp this is basically to hold your needle one thing you should note is that there are different types of needles which we will discuss later but um you can't just use any machine needle for your sewing machine there are specific needles made for specific machines so you have to make sure you get the right type of needle the presser foot is what holds the fabric down in place when you're stitching so there are different types of presser foot so it really depends on the function you're doing there is a regular one um, that you have on your machine and please note that there are machines that don't come with this sometimes you have to buy them as a separate uh, part of your machine so the presser foot there is one that stitches zips so you'll find that it, instead of having two two sections it has one section there are some that are used for gathering there are just different types of foots for different types of functions so you can have one machine but you can use various foots for the machine so it really depends on the machine you have there are some machines that are very limited in the type of foots they have and then there's a machine that have a lot of foots so you cannot really sew um, anything without a presser foot then we have the bobbin cover so basically um, when you have when you're sewing um, and your bobbin is where you put your thread you cannot have that exposed so there's usually a cover for some machines it's like the other photo where it's the bobbin is put in a different direction where it is not facing um, upwards or outwards but it is inside so you don't really need a cover specifically for that so it really depends on your machine but there it's this is one of those variation parts of a machine we have the bobbin cover release button so basically this is just to release the bobbin cover then the next one we have the feed dog this one is in all machines this is basically what feeds your ma your fabric through your machine so you don't have to pull your fabric when you're sewing you just have to guide your fabric but the feed dog basically is what allows your fabric to glide through your machine as you're sewing then of course we have the machine needle i'll dwell a bit on the machine needle um, if you want me to do a full video on machine needles i can so the universal needle is basically what you can use to sew almost anything but then there are also different types of needles for different types of fabric so like the jersey needle has a round ball point because it's, it helps in not damaging the fabric as you sew it because it won't pierce through it will move the fibers away and so on and so forth you can read all those there's one for jeans there's one for stretch they are all they are different thicknesses and different points uh, depending on them um needle the project you're doing and also please note that the top part of the needle they usually two types is a flat one there's one that has a half round and flat then there's one that's all round it really depends on your machine the industrial machine tends to be the one that's all round and then the one that's flat tends to be in the electrical machine that's generally for sewing clothes because that's what i do and that's how i know them and then also another thing to know is that there are some needles that are longer than others it really depends on the machine you have then there's also this thing about the numbers on a um, machine needles and what they mean so the single numbers mostly um 
the single numbers basically the lower numbers 8 to 19 are the american system and then 60 to 120 is the european system so sometimes when you're buying machines you see both numbers so basically the higher the number the thicker and heavier the needle is the lower the number the finite is so basically the thicker means it's it's big and it probably does um, it really depends on the, what you're stitching, but that's a good way of just um, gauging. But a universal needle generally is what most people buy because it can do very many things. And then, of course, in the next slide, you can see the different types of needles. There's universal ballpoint, the sharp uh, microtech, leather, denim, and self-threading, and yeah, so on and so forth. And then the parts of a needle, and then there's even the double point needle and stuff like that. So in a nutshell those are machine needles next we have the needle plate basically this is what allows this it covers the feed dock to some extent as you're stitching and then it also has holes that allows the needle to pass through and there are some needle plates that are very limiting in some machines especially like industrial machine or the manual machine it only has a hole so you can only use a needle that can go just straight down and do a straight stitch so you can even do a zigzag stitch with it but then there's some machine plates that will allow you to be able to do zigzag so those are also things um to note then of course i've been mentioning the bobbin and the bobbin case these ones you actually buy separately you buy needles separately you buy bobbin and bobbin case separately um they don't come with the machine of course the hook of um this section generally that comes with the machine you don't buy the hook but sometimes you have to replace the hook because it wears out and then the bobbin and the bobbin case you buy um some machines have plastic there's some machines that have metal and if your machine has plastic and you want to change to metal because metal is more durable you have to check the equivalent um of the plastic and you can't just change it up so generally you'll always be guided when you're buying a machine they'll tell you which bobbin and bobbin cases and this is basically the lower part of your machine when you're sewing this is the thread that intertwines with the thread in the needle so in a nutshell that is all the parts of a sewing machine i hope you have understood the gist of it and it will inform you now when you are having issues with your machine the parts that need to be replaced, the parts that need to be fixed, uh, what you need to do, knowing the terms definitely helps you navigate all that. So I hope that uh, the video for the machine information has been helpful to you because I know um, some of those terms are new and maybe even overwhelming to some degree because it seems like with every single career there are all these new terms you need to learn and fashion has a lot of them. Either way, um, I am doing a part two, as I mentioned at the beginning, maintaining a sewing machine and the link is in the description. So check it there or at the end of the credits, you'll probably also be able to click on it because I want to upload them at around the same time. I just thought that if I added it here, it would be way too long. And also I just wanted to have them as two separate resources because I know people are in different um, journeys in their sewing journey so maybe you just need more information about maintaining than you do need about machine parts because maybe you settled on that either way it doesn't harm to watch both uh it doesn't do any harm to watch both because you might actually need to replace your machine or buy a new machine so do check out the next video and i guess i'll see you there bye <music>